New Zealand is composed of two major islands, the North Island and the South Island. This video is about our drive through the South Island. We started in the upper right-hand corner, first along the coast to its major city, Christchurch, then inland, down to the southern tip where we took a ferry to Stewart Island. We returned and drove north, spending time in the fjord country, and finally we followed the western coastline up visiting beaches and wineries. This is a typical coastline scene near the city of Christchurch. Marine life was easily visible. Christchurch is located in a large, broad valley. Just outside of town are scenes that are typical of the South Island. Sheep, flowers in bloom in the spring, and the beautiful coastline. There are also vineyards. This one was recommended to us by a local. Many of these vineyards are family-run, small operations, yet they produce some excellent wine, some exported around the world. We never knew what interesting activity we might run into around the next turn in the highway. I was surprised. New Zealand exports a great deal of lumber. The South Island in New Zealand is relatively close to the Antarctic continent. They have scientists in Antarctica and an exhibition showing their activities in that strange land. suddenly stopped. You get so used to the constant howling. As we drove south and inland, we began to see the great mountain ranges of New Zealand. You'll notice there's very little traffic, nice roads. We particularly like to take short hikes. New Zealand is full of them. These suspension bridges were tricky to walk on. Most of the time, the paths were easy. This trail, though, had some scary spots. This was kind of a marshy area, and they had built a very nice walkway. We were approaching the foot of a glacier. The glacier's moraine. The glacier lake. All classic features of a glacier. We didn't stay long, 
It was the last day of November. Then we headed back. Going downhill is always faster. Still, one has to be careful in the wilderness. New Zealand has lots of cows. These cows took advantage of a small pond used to create electricity for the ranch. And sheep were everywhere even on the highways. The farmers did not seem to trailer their sheep, but instead drove them out on the public roads, <laughs> stopping all the vehicle traffic. A key part of having sheep is cutting or shearing the wool from the sheep. These workers are using hand clippers to cut the wool from the sheep. If they used electric trimmers, they could cut closer to the skin, but this owner likes to leave some wool on his sheep in case it gets cold suddenly. They're still a little protected. This guy is the buyer of the wool. Forms a protective coat, if you like. It's his third birthday now. Uh, man, hug it. No, no, second birthday. Just had the second birthday. Second shield. Certain circumstances, yeah. Okay, but they don't seem to be struggling. No, well, a farmer. I continued to be surprised at how docile the sheep were during the shearing process. This guy on the left owns the sheep. Here's the truck ready to take the wool away. Many times I saw the area beside the highway used to accommodate cattle and sheep. They were being driven to a different grazing area. Dogs are an important part of the operation. Here, the farmer is separating the sheep according to whether they're young or old. Notice how these dogs work the sheep. The sheep ranchers deal with thousands and thousands of sheep. Stewart Island lies south of the South Island, and once it was a pirate ship hideout area. And it still is mostly wild with nature. 
It's about a one-hour ferry trip from the mainland. There are not many visitors, as there aren't many touristy things to do here. Nature is king and queen here. This is a caca. Interesting birds are all over. Because it's an island, there are many beaches, but no sunbathers. The lush forests have paths for walking. Strange bird calls can be heard as you walk through the ferns. The main town on Stewart Island is rather small. Its church on the hill is the dominant feature. The island has many bays, inlets, and beaches. Perfect for a pirate hideout. The main activity is in the harbor. The material being taken back to the mainland is protected in large metal bins covered with a tarp. They are carried in the rear of the shuttle ferry on the way back to the mainland. The contents are safe from the salt spray. I was just amazed at how tame some of the birds were. Our next major goal was fjord country on the southwest coastline. We drove to Milford Sound. This is the center of fjord country. We took one of the many sightseeing boat trips out among the towering walls. We saw a few waterfalls after a rain, there are hundreds of waterfalls. The vertical walls were impressive. From time to time, we saw wildlife. I couldn't believe how easily this fur seal was able to climb up this steep, slippery slope. These are bottlenosed dolphins feeding. Our skipper got the bow of the tour boat up under some falling water. Several people filled their cups with this water. Then the skipper brought us extremely close to the bottom of a waterfall. The rock formations here are very interesting. We returned to shore 
then headed to the starting point for one of New Zealand's most famous hikes, the three-day Milford Trek. The access to the Milford Trek is tightly controlled. Each day, one of two groups departs with each person carrying everything they'll need. And a second group departs that is provided food and lodging along the way during the three-day walk. The second group does bring plenty of rain gear. You not only have to contend with rain, but also with the pesky sand flies. This is the structure in which the independent backpackers stay at night. Did I mention it rains a lot? Now, we only went part way on the Milford track for half a day. Then we returned to explore some other trails. The next trail that we took was the Rootburn track. This track is very well maintained and it has one of those wobbling, hanging bridges. I have a problem with my skin, but nothing like the problem this tree has. Again, we encountered another farmer moving his herd of cows, and traffic was tied up. An oyster catcher? We drove a bit farther, then encountered more cows in the road. It can be slow going off the main highway in New Zealand. We made a stop at the most famous bungee jumping location in New Zealand. I've never tried this myself. One of the big attractions on New Zealand's South Island are its glaciers. This is the Fox Glacier. This is the Franz Joseph Glacier. Then we went back to walking trails this time in the Abel Tasman National Park. <laughs> More swing bridges. This trail brought us to the Wainumi Waterfall. I really enjoyed the rich foliage and these easy walks. Now, we worked our way back out to the shoreline and New Zealand's magnificent beaches. Quite a variety of nice looking shells on this beach. This place is called Farewell Spit. It's a popular place for kayakers as the bays are quite protected from the heavy ocean. Yeah. 
and there are some lovely coves to explore. You could spend your entire vacation exploring and enjoying the large variety of beaches in New Zealand and its birds. And guess what? More sheep. I was watching these dogs work when suddenly the farmer got mad at one of his dogs and the dog came running up the hill toward me while the farmer continued to work. The dog seemed to feel safe sitting up the hill with me waiting to be called back down. He kept trying to get the farmer's attention. Our stay on South Island was about over. And we took the inter-island ferry back to the North Island and our trip home. Before leaving New Zealand, we bag. saw some more unfamiliar bird species. This is called a saddleback. And this is the kaka. More cows being driven down the center of a highway. Our last stop was a very special beach. There are hot water springs just below the sand's surface. So at low tide, you can dig a hole in the sand and then sit in hot water. A novelty. Well, it was time to drive to the airport and fly home. It had been a great trip. This completes part two of our trip driving through New Zealand. To view part one, the North Island, go to the YouTube search box and enter Franklin Clay Films New Zealand.